So Hugh, your film Loving Vincent is uh, one of the shortlisted animated films for this year's Academy Awards. Uh, congratulations for being in consideration. Um, take us back to the very beginning and uh, where the idea for this movie came from. Well, it was actually my wife, Dorota Cobiella's idea. Um, she came up with it 10 years ago. Um, she'd been a painter and then she uh, was getting most of her paid work in, in animation and, and VFX. And after a while, she really missed painting and decided that she wanted to go back to painting. But, you know, she was also wanted to stay in film. And so she decided that she would combine her two passions and she'd paint a uh, film. And she was going to do it all herself and it was going to be a short film. Um, and uh, then she met me, uh, we fell in love, got married, and uh, over that period of, uh, uh, I managed to persuade her that it, it, we should do it as a, as a feature film and do the world's first fully painted uh, feature film. As you said, this is the world's first fully painted feature film. Uh, I don't think people understand the uh, significance of that quite. Can you talk a bit about how difficult that was to do, and uh, also why, uh, in this story about Vincent van Gogh, why was that the appropriate approach for this material? Well, the the second question's uh, easiest to answer is that, you know, Vincent, uh, his paintings are oil paint on canvas. And so, you know, in terms of animation, what was going to look uh, the most authentic and, and the most appropriate for his work was oil painting on canvas animation. So the whole point was to bring his paintings to life to tell his story. And so the way we could be most faithful for, to him was to, to do this. Um, you know, the only, well, the biggest problem is, there, there were two problems. One is uh, it's incredibly slow. Um, I mean, to give you some idea, before um, doing Loving Vincent, I did a puppet animation film, <clears throat> which was always seen as the slowest form of animation. Um, but, you know, on, on those films, we did uh, two seconds per animator per day. And on this, we did a third of a second per animator per day. So it was six times slower than puppet animation. Um, so, yes, it was it was very labor intensive. And also we had to uh, there. There aren't uh, there are a few painting animators, mainly who do oil painting on glass and mainly in Russia. Um, and so uh, we actually had to train our, an entire workforce from scratch. So, you know, we we uh, we had good raw material. We had really amazing painters and um, and uh, we had to, to train them into to oil painting animators who could uh, very faithfully do Van Gogh style. I, I want to talk a bit about the story, story film, uh, because I think it's easy to uh, forget that it's actually a really uh, fascinating narrative that you guys construct uh, within these oil paintings. Can you talk a bit about uh, writing the script and constructing the story a bit? Yeah, well, um, the idea from the beginning was to bring his paintings to life to tell his story. And and, um, and these were real people. So the people that we have in the film were the were real people that he painted. And uh, they all had some role in his life. And the uh, after Vincent died, uh, many of those people were interviewed because Vincent only became famous after after his death. And what they said was very different. So, and contradicted each other. So, you know, Adeline Raveau would say that he was very calm and that he never drunk in his final weeks. And then, you know, another eyewitness would be saying that, uh, you know, he was going and getting drunk every day. Uh, so what people were saying were contradicting each other and also contradicting what uh, Vincent said in his letters. So from the beginning, we felt like we were detectives because we had to try and work out who was telling the truth who was lying, who was maybe hiding, you know, a dark secret. And, and that's really where the, the kind of the investigation, uh, the sort of mystery investigation into what happened to him came from, is that there are so many different views that, that we had to be detectives while we were writing the script. And I mean, he's such a fascinating individual as well. I mean, what, uh, what is it about him for you that, that makes him uh, such an interesting subject for a film? Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, there's many things. I mean, you know, uh, Vincent is is one of the most extreme people in in history. Um, uh, they, he he really he really devoted his life. He he didn't leave anything behind. You know, he he was full on uh, devoted everything to to whatever he was doing. And and um, you know, he actually failed at four careers in his twenties. 
and 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 was suffering from depression and and uh, his family dismissed him as a black sheep and and thought he would he would amount to nothing and then at 27 he starts drawing at 29 he starts painting and by 37 you know he he changed the world of art forever so just that intensity and that passion that he had um and and also you know the fact that he um managed not to be cynical even though he struggled to so much in 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 the real world that he was in um, he still managed to be very compassionate and, and passionate about the, the world and people around him, uh, even though, you know, uh, for him, it was a, a real struggle to, to, to get through life. And uh, I think that's a great example. You employ a really great uh, voice cast in this film. And in fact, uh, it looks as though uh, you modeled a lot of your character designs on the specific actors who are playing these characters, at least real life people. Can you talk a bit about casting the film and uh, working with the actors to help create these animated characters? Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're somewhere between voice casting and, and, and live action, really, because um, I mean, we took our example from Vincent because Vincent, when he painted uh, the, the portraits, he painted real people in front of him. So he never did it from imagination. Uh, it was always he wanted to capture the, the, the soul and the essence of, of the person in front of him. And what we wanted is we wanted our, our painters to do the same thing, is to, to, to reimagine those actors and those actors' performances using the impasto and the color technique of, of Vincent. So, uh, you know, we cast people who looked like the paintings. We put them in costumes uh, that were as close to, to, the cost, uh, to the paintings as possible. And then we shot them on, on massive green screens, um, uh, live action. Um, and then those were the references for our, our painters. So then our painters would be sitting in their painting animation workstation. Uh, they'd have their canvas in front of them. Above, they would have uh, frame by frame the, the live action reference, and they would have to reimagine that into the, the, the painting uh, technique and the colors of, of Van Gogh. Um, so, I mean, we, we like to think of it as combined performance between the painting animator and the actor. Um, so, obviously, Douglas Booth actually looks very much like Armand Roulon um, as a character. Um, Chris O'Dowd, uh, surprisingly, despite being half the age of Postman Roulon, who looks quite like Postman Roulon once you put that big beard on him. Um, so, and you know, uh, uh, and then um, Jerome Flynn uh, looks uh, uncannily like Dr. Gachet. <laughs> so, uh, and he was actually the hardest, hardest to, to cast to, to find uh, Dr. Gachet because uh, Vincent said he wanted the. Uh, the broken expression, the melancholic expression of our time on, on that character. And, uh, you know, Jerome's good at that, so. Right. Uh, working with uh, your wife and co-director, can you talk a bit about uh, how the two of you collaborated, how you divided work, how you supervised work, and what was that collaboration like? It was <clears throat> very organic, really. I mean, I started off uh, producing, um, and she was writing and directing. Um, and then um you know we were we obviously we, we lived together so we were just talking about the uh, script all the time and she was getting frustrated because she was uh, she wrote she was writing the second draft in in english which is her second language she wrote the first draft in polish um and so she was she she just started getting me involved in the writing so you know then i was very involved in the writing and we were planning the shoot together and and uh, so it just it just kind of happened uh, very organically for the for the writing for the the live action shoot for the editing and you know when we came to the the painting part of the process the uh, painting animation then uh, really it was uh, down to i was i became then in an an advisory capacity um and all sorts of i was more like line producing managing the studio because you know Dorota is a professional painter um i'm not <laughs> so um that was that was in in uh, entirely her call really in terms of approving uh, the paintings and uh, so uh, it was quite useful because we had a really tough shed, uh, schedule so i went off and did the music with clint mansell and did the sound in london um and she stayed in the painting studio um working with the painting animators and then yeah and then the, the final stages we were back together for for the the final uh, post production and uh yeah, been traveling around the world uh, in hotel rooms for seven months ever since. 
you bring up Clint Mansell, and I actually did want to ask you about that because his music plays such a vital role uh, in the storytelling. I mean, it's really like another character. Can you talk a bit about what you guys were looking for in terms of the music for this film and, and uh, how you worked with uh, Mr. Mansell? Well, I mean, that was, that was very much Dorota. Um, it, but before I, I uh, joined her for, for working on the second draft of the, of the script and the subsequent drafts, uh, she, she was listening only to Clint's music. Um, so when she was writing, she, she had this playlist. And once I joined her, then I only had this playlist. So we were just playing all of his uh, previous albums. And, you know, I think, I think she just felt that, that he encapsulated... Um, uh, the the uh, tragedy and, and and misfortune and at the same time there could be something uplifting you know in his music despite the fact that it's it, it's uh, it can, it can be very uh, tragic and dark and I, I think she always felt that that really suited Vincent's story um, and actually you know Vin, um, actually Clint turned us down five times uh, oh. and uh, you know we kept going back to Dorota and going okay right now we have to start making a list <laughs> and she's like no 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 there's there's no one else who can do this and and finally clint met us um in london and really he met us to say look please stop asking me you know uh, i just uh, you know i can't do it I've, I'm, I've got lots of stuff on and, and and we met him for lunch and we we we, we spoke and and then uh you know he he was trying to say why he couldn't do it and then about two hours later he phoned us up and and uh and said he was going to do the project. Um, so, and and it was amazing, really, because I think one of the things that attracted him was um, that he had time. Uh, because he said normally when you're a composer on uh, on a film, uh, you help sort of have three weeks between when they uh, lock the cut and, and and when they want it in cinemas, you know, or close to that. Um, and with our project, um, you know, he came on board when we started, uh, just after we started painting. So he had a year and a half um, to think about the project, um, to try different things. And, and for the first three months, he just read books. He read the letters and, and he read books. And, and I think for him, it, 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 he really enjoyed having um, the opportunity to, um, to spend some time with the project. And, and, you know, I think the way that he got those incredible results was because he really did go inside Vincent's head, you know, and, and uh, I mean, his view of Vincent is that he was the original punk rocker. Uh, um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so um, uh, he, he, he and, and also he didn't want us, he didn't want us to send him the music that we'd been cutting to from of, of his uh, previous uh, scores until he'd already kind of made all his decisions on it. And then afterwards he, he said, oh, can I hear your 10th track now? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad that he uh, finally said yes to you. It looks like the sixth time was the charm. Um, uh, you are an Oscar winner uh, for your film, Peter and the Wolf. Uh, I wonder what that kind of recognition meant for you. Um, I think it was a relief, really. Um, <laughs> it was, um, I mean, Peter and the Wolf was, was a big project. Um, for a short film, it, it was a very big project. I mean, we actually made it for, for live orchestral um, performances and and uh, that was kind of its primary aim and we had our premiere at the, the Royal Albert Hall and um, I, I I think I got a lot of flack from from people around me you know about making the decision to do like such a big expensive short film as opposed to you know doing a feature film um, as as many of my contemporaries were and you know and I think the success that it had in uh, or orchestral halls and, and, you know, having the success of getting the Oscar made me feel like I wasn't completely ridiculous doing it. Well, this is another uh, really great movie and uh, congratulations on it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Good speaking to you. Nice speaking with you as well. Have a good one.